Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. Israelites, now that you know the everlasting covenant is still in effect. Now that many of you know that you should worship the Father, pray to the Father, and serve the Father, it is important for you to know the truth about your salvation. The beast religion made salvation available to all who worship and serve the Roman God, Jesus Christ. The question to ask oneself, did the Most High make salvation available to all? The scriptures in the Bible made it clear that many are called, but a few are chosen. Well, many are called but few are chosen. Not only a few are chosen, the scripture said narrow is the road that leads to life. Israelites, it is important that you understand that Adam and Eve have many descendants. However, not all people descend from Adam and Eve. Everything starts with Adam and Eve. The workers of iniquity in religion exclude Adam and Eve from the scriptures and made the focus on the Roman God called Jesus Christ and his people. Even the Most High, the Father, is not relevant in the New Testament. Everything surrounds Jesus. In order for you to know the truth, you have to start at the beginning. I find it odd that Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. Somehow the scriptures do not talk about their journey to salvation. The scriptures in the Bible made Adam and Eve sinners that never received salvation. The scriptures in the book of Genesis revealed the consequences to Adam and Eve's sin. And that was the end of the story for Adam and Eve in the scriptures in the Bible. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also, and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. The scriptures in the New and Old Testaments focus on the second Adam that will come to give salvation to the world in the form of the Roman God called Jesus the Christ. As descendants of Adam, we should know our story. We shouldn't let the other species of mankind tell us who we are. The Most High placed His Spirit in us to tell us the truth. The time has come for us to use the Holy Spirit and listen to the voice of the Most High speaking through His Spirit. The scriptures said, My sheep knows my voice and they follow me. The strange voices, they will not follow. And a stranger will they not follow? but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. The day the indigenous black people accepted religion and used religion to establish a relationship with the Most High, that was the very day they began to listen to strange voices. The strange voices led many indigenous black people astray because many Israelites and indigenous black people were not aware of the covenant the Most High made with Adam to save him and his seed, the workers of iniquity used the covenant the Most High made with Adam to establish the Roman God, Jesus, in religion. 
Israelites, there's nothing secret in the beast system that would not be made known, nor is anything that is hidden. The scriptures made it very clear that everything will be exposed. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. The true awakening is exposing everything that was kept secret. Israelites, it is important that you have an ear to hear. The knowledge you will gain in the true awakening will not support the lies told to you in religion. The Most High will reveal a lot to his people. Anything you don't understand, ask the Most High in prayer for confirmation. The Satans use the Roman God to keep the indigenous black people in sin. As long as the descendants of Adam are in sin, the synagogue of Satan can continue to rule over them. The mother harlot, the Roman Catholic Church, and his daughters used the Roman God to rule over the seed of Adam. The Most High made it very clear in the scriptures that he made his people in his image and likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam, in the day when they were created. The indigenous black people are the original people. The heathens' science confirmed that black people are the original people, and Adam is indeed a black man. Why are the indigenous black people worshipping a god in the beast religion that does not look like them? How can the Roman God, Jesus Christ, be the most high if the original black people and Jesus do not share the same image? Remember, religion teach that Jesus is the most high in the flesh. If the God you worship doesn't look like you, it is safe to say you are worshiping a false God in religion. Remember, you are made in the image and likeness of the most high. The Messiah is also the image of the most high. Both the indigenous black people and the Messiah are made in the image of the Most High. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? The graven image circulating in the beast system for centuries is not made in the image of the Most High. Israelites, it's either you're going to believe the Most High or you don't. The black woman is the mother to all living. Black men are the fathers to the seed of Adam only. Remember, there was an infiltration in the womb of the woman. The sons of God infiltrated the womb of the daughters of Adam and made children in their image and likeness. Adam is not the father to all living. It is important that everyone know that Adam is not the father to all mankind. When I hear in the beast culture that we are all children of Adam, if that were true, we all would be made in the image of the Most High. In addition, discrimination wouldn't exist. The beast system wouldn't cater only to the people that look like the Roman God Jesus. The Satans rule over all the kingdoms of this world. If we all were the same, the enmity, the most high place between the woman seed and the serpent seed, wouldn't exist. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. I'm tired of hearing we are all the same. There are two species of mankind. Wake up. It's about time the indigenous black people understand you live among hybrids, fallen angels, and unclean spirits. No, we are not the same. That is why we do not share the same image with the other species of mankind. Now that we establish that Adam is not the father to all living, Israelites, it is important for you to know that just because you were chosen, it doesn't mean the other descendants of Adam are excluded from salvation. The Israelites are the people the Most High chose to show himself strong through. The Most High chose the Israelite bloodline to do his will. Before there was Abraham, 
Isaac, Jacob, and Shem, there were many other men of the Most High upholding the covenant. The Most High promised Adam that he would save him and his seed. Because Adam and Eve repented, the Most High gave them salvation. When the Most High responded to Adam's sacrifice, the Most High revealed to Adam how he would save him and the righteous of his seed. And when Adam heard this word from God, he was comforted with that which God had told him, for he had told him how he would save him. Israelites, because Adam and Eve sinned, judgment came upon them and their descendants. The judgment was a five day and a half sentence for the seed of Adam to walk this earth. Once the five day and a half judgment is completed, then the Most High would send his anointed to save Adam and his seed. Then God in his mercy for Adam, who was made after his own image and similitude, explained to him that these were 5,500 years and how one would then come and save him and his seed. The Most High made Adam aware of how he would save him and his seed. There were no secrets between the Most High and Adam when it came to salvation. The Most High revealed everything to Adam. Religion made salvation and everything pertaining to the Most High a mystery. Religion made it seem as if the New Covenant fulfilled the everlasting covenant. Religion used the New Covenant the Most High would make with his people as the foundation to establish the Roman God that would save the world from sin. The Most High said to Adam, he will give him salvation. Your salvation has nothing to do with the Most High saving the world. Remember, there will be a new earth and a new heaven. The earth will pass away. If your sins were taken away, there wouldn't be a need for you to repent every day. The Most High said to Adam that he would send the word, his anointed, to save him when the judgment against him is fulfilled. And the Lord said to Adam, I told thee that at the end of five days and a half, I will send my word and save thee. The covenant the Most High made with Adam granted him salvation. You and I didn't need to accept the Roman God as your savior to receive salvation. The Most High already worked out a plan to redeem Adam and his seed from the beginning. The Most High said to Adam, he made a covenant with him and he will not turn from the covenant. If the Most High will not turn from the covenant of saving Adam and his seed after the five day and a half judgment, Why does religion teach that you have to accept Jesus to be saved? Then God had pity on them and said, O Adam, I have made my covenant with thee, and I will not turn from it, neither will I let thee return to the garden until my covenant of the great five days and a half is fulfilled. But God said unto Adam, I have made thee a promise. When that promise is fulfilled, I will bring thee back into the garden, thee and thy righteous seed. The reason the workers of iniquity insist that you have to accept the Roman God to be saved, to establish a covenant with you. Without a covenant, the Satans have no power over you. Once you establish evil covenants with the Satans, you give these wicked entities power over you. What did the Satan, Satanel, say to Adam when Adam listened to him and disobeyed the Most High? Satanel said, because you obey me and not your God, I am king over you. No deliverance will come to you until the day set by your God. But now, O Adam, by reason of thy fall, thou art under my rule and I am king over thee. Because thou hast hearkened to me and hast transgressed against thy God, neither will there be any deliverance from my hands until the day promised thee by thy God. Yet if thou hadst submitted, and have been obedient to me, and have kept my word, thou wouldest be with my angels in my garden. But when thou didst transgress, and hearken to Satan, thou didst become his guest among his angels, that are full of wickedness. And thou camest to this earth, that bring forth to thee thorns and thistles. When you make covenants with the synagogue of Satan, you give these people and their gods power over you. As soon as Adam and Eve obeyed the Satan God drill in the garden, they opened the door to the Satans to destroy them. They made the one they listened to their God. Just like when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he became your God. Israelites, covenants are binding. The Most High will honor every covenant you make. 
You have to be careful with the covenants you make in the B system. In this generation, there are many indigenous black people making covenants with the heathens and their gods. Most indigenous black people do not realize the covenant they establish with these heathens are the very covenants oppressing them. The Satan's way of life is deception. Make no covenants with them and their gods. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. Israelites, there is a reason the Most High say make no covenants with them. If the people of the Most High wasn't making covenants with idols, the Most High wouldn't warn his people to make no covenants with the heathens and their gods. The Israelites have a history of idol worship. Idol worship did not end with our ancestors. This generation is deep into idolatry. The heathens are the biggest pretenders. They make their covenants appear to be helping you. However, their intentions are malicious. For example, the laws they created declares that all men are created equal. They make it seem as if everyone in the beast culture have equal rights. Yet the heathens have many loopholes that give them more privilege than you. As well as their behavior throughout history reveal they don't believe in their own laws. They only create these laws to make you feel good and to win your trust. When religions say accept the Roman God as your Lord and Savior, you unknowingly made an evil covenant with an idol. Remember, deception is how the Satans get you to establish covenants with them. How else did the Satans deceive the whole world? And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Many indigenous black people don't comprehend that this earth in general is a prison for us. We were made to be in the garden. We are not living in our true nature. I did a message about living in an altered reality. I recommend that you watch that video. Because of the transgression of Adam and Eve, we came to this earth to live a life full of oppression and trials. These oppression and trials are a part of the judgment against Adam and his seed. When Adam and Eve repented, the Most High had mercy on Adam and Eve and gave them salvation. The salvation is not coming until the judgment against Adam and Eve are fulfilled. Religion said the Messiah took away our sins and the sins of the world if we believe in him. The Most High said to Adam, when the word come, the anointed one, he will take away all of the infirmities, meaning all the sorrows, trials, and pain we are enduring living on this earth. But I will, when I shall come down from heaven and shall become flesh of thy seed and take upon me the infirmity from which thou sufferest, then the darkness that came upon thee in this cave shall come upon me in the grave when I am in the flesh of thy seed, and I, who am without years, shall be subject to the reckoning of years, of times, of months, and of days, and I shall be reckoned as one of the sons of men in order to save thee. Then God said again unto Adam, Because thou hast borne fear and trembling in this land, languor and suffering, treading and walking about, going upon this mountain, and dying from it, I will take all this upon myself in order to save thee. When the Most High judged Adam, he cursed the ground. The judgment against Adam state, in sorrow will he eat from it all the days of his life. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. The covenant the Most High made with Adam state the Most High would take away the infirmities of Adam to save him. The Most High did not say anything about taking away the sins of the world. Think about it, Israelites. How can the Most High take away sin from the people? Sin is transgressing the laws of the Most High. If the Most High take away all your sins and the sins of the world, that means the Most High is taking away his laws to get rid of sin. If the Most High get rid of his laws, his people would become lawless. The Most High is not the father to the lawless. 
The scripture said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of the most high shall never pass away. The Messiah in the scripture said he did not come to abolish the laws, but to fulfill everything that is written about him. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. If the anointed one in the scripture say he did not come to abolish the laws, why is religion telling you the Messiah died for your sins? It made no sense for the Most High to send his anointed to die to save the world by dying for our sins. Sin is transgressing the laws. The Most High did not take away his laws. I know religion said the laws are done away with. However, the word does not confirm religion's doctrine of the laws being done away with. Israelites, that is why you're held accountable for your sins until this day. Regardless if you accept the Roman God as your Lord and Savior, you're responsible for transgressing the laws of the Most High. The Messiah said he came to fulfill everything written about him. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Who is fact-checking the misinformation the beast religion is teaching the people? The workers of iniquity who run all social media platforms are quick to censor the truth. The high-level workers of iniquity who run the beast system with the Satans treat everyone like minor children. They don't allow you to make your own decisions. The synagogue of Satan decides for you. When they censor our voices, they are deciding for you. Remember, Israelites, there's not a general way for you to serve the Most High like religion make it appear to be. Your journey is not going to be like mine. All of us are on different stages in our journey. That is why we must be patient with each other in the awakening. The workers of iniquity fact check everything that is against their agendas in the beast system. Who is fact checking their doctrines of devils? the very doctrines of devils that are leading the people onto the broad road that leads to destruction. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Israelites, whatever is popular in the beast culture is an abomination with the Most High. Remember that. The Roman God is popular in the beast system as well as in the awakening. Adam and Eve seek forgiveness when they offered their blood on an altar to the Most High. Everything Adam and Eve did to be forgiven of their sins, the Most High said he would send the word, the anointed one, to do as Adam and Eve did to save Adam and his seed. When the Most High sent the word, his anointed, to fulfill everything that is written about him, the blood of the anointed one was offered as a form of forgiveness. Then came the word of God to Adam and said unto him, O Adam, as thou hast shed thy blood, so will I shed my own blood when I become flesh of thy seed. And as thou didst die, O Adam, so also will I die. And as thou didst build an altar, so also will I make for thee an altar on the earth. And as thou didst offer thy blood upon it, so also will I offer my blood upon an altar on the earth. And as thou didst sue for forgiveness through that blood, so also will I make my blood forgiveness of sins and blot out transgressions in it. Israelites, how can the Most High forgive you and extend mercy to you if there's no sin? Meditate on that for a little while. The blood of the anointed one does not wipe your sins away, nor did the anointed one take your sins away. There is a difference in receiving mercy and forgiveness for sin versus taking away the sins of the world. Taking away sin means all the sins you will commit in your lifetime was taken away. Israelites, that is why so many in the beast religion act wickedly with no regards because they believe their sins were taken away by the blood of the Roman God, Jesus. The blood of the true Messiah offer you mercy and forgiveness to those who repent of their sins. Big difference. Repentance is turning away from sin. That is why the Most High is calling his people to repent and turn from their wicked ways. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin 
and will heal their land. John in the scriptures said, repent for the kingdom is at hand. John didn't say except Jesus. When you repent and turn to the most high, mercy and forgiveness is extended to you when you sin. Israelites, Gentiles, and all of Adam's seed, you're held accountable for your sins. The Most High said to Adam that when he fulfilled the covenant, he will show mercy. There will be no more suffering, but gladness. The Roman God came, died for your sins, yet you're still oppressed. Sorrow and curses are destroying your life. Did the Roman God truly did what he promised he would do for you? When, however, the covenant is fulfilled, then shall I show thee in thy seed mercy and bring thee into a land of gladness where there is neither sorrow nor suffering, but abiding joy and gladness and light that never fails and praises that never cease and a beautiful garden that shall never pass away. Israelites, does the word of the Most High align with the doctrines you've heard in religion? Does what your pastors teach about salvation align with the word of the Most High? Now do you see why the Most High is not in their temples? Can you begin to understand why the world cannot receive the spirit of the Most High? Israelites, I hope salvation is becoming clearer to you. There was no need for you to accept the Roman God. Salvation is given to all of Adam's seed who repent and serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth. Because of the covenant the Most High made with Adam to save him and his seed, that is why we are not consumed. The foundation to the Christian religion is based on John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Israelites, we all can believe in the Messiah, but if we don't repent and serve the Most High, you will perish. Believing is one thing, obeying the Most High is another. The everlasting covenant already gave you eternal life. I know a lot of people who accepted the Roman God as their Lord and Savior, and the life they live does not illustrate the promises the Roman God gave to those who believe and accepted him as their Lord and Savior. The indigenous black people as a whole is a testimony against the Roman God. Many black people serve and accepted Jesus as their Savior. However, Everywhere around the world, black people are subjugated in their own land, regardless if they are Israelites or not. Why is that? The indigenous black people are of the seed of Adam and the Satans wage war with the seed of Adam. The scriptures in the Bible said, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Satan has come down to you with great wrath. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Israelites, nobody took your sins away. The Most High offer you forgiveness of sin after true repentance take place. The Most High said to Adam, after the 5,500 years are over, the Most High will bring Adam and Eve into the garden to eat from the tree of life, along with the righteous of his seed to eat from the tree of life, to live forever in paradise. O oh Adam, as to the fruit of the tree of life for which thou askest, I will not give it thee now. But when the 5,500 years are fulfilled, then will I give thee of the fruit of the tree of life, and thou shalt eat and live forever, thou and Eve and thy righteous seed. And now, behold, I have accepted thy offering, O Adam, but the days of the covenant wherein I have bound thee are not fulfilled. When they are fulfilled, then will I bring thee back into the garden. The scriptures confirm in the Bible as well as in the book of Enoch of what the book of Adam and Eve state of eating from the tree of life. The book of Revelation said all who overcome, that would be the remnant or the righteous, they will eat from the tree of life that is in the midst of paradise. The tree of life will be a healing for all the righteous. He that hath an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, 
which bare twelve manna fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. The book of Enoch referred to the tree of life as the fragrant tree. The book of Enoch revealed that the holy angel Michael is the leader in the place where the tree of life will be. The scripture said in the book of Revelation that this place is paradise. Many of you know paradise as the Garden of Eden. Remember, it was Michael that kicked Adam and Eve out of the garden. He it is that is set to deliver our people and all the righteous at the appointed time. The book of Enoch also state that the holy angel Michael is over the righteous. The Most High and the Lamb would dwell in paradise. My prayer is for all Israelites and the righteous to correctly identify the Lamb of the Most High. The book of Enoch state that the fragrant tree will be food for the righteous. The righteous will be able to eat from the fragrant tree after judgment day. Then answered Michael, one of the holy and honored angels who was with me and was their leader. And as for the fragrant tree, no mortal is permitted to touch it till the great judgment, when he shall take vengeance on all and bring everything to its consummation forever. It shall be given to the righteous and holy. Its fruit shall be for food to the elect. It shall be transplanted to the holy place, to the temple of the Lord, the eternal King. Israelites, have you ever heard the scriptures open up to you and reveal the truth about salvation like you're hearing today? Never in all my years living have I heard the scriptures reveal such truth about salvation. I was led to believe, like many indigenous black people, that Jesus was salvation. When I look at the Roman God Jesus, I couldn't find myself in him. The scripture said I was the image of the Most High, but what I was led to believe to be an accurate image of the Most High through the beast religion turned out to be an abomination and not even close to the image of the invisible creator. Israelites, how many times must the Satans lie to us in the beast system for the people of the Most High to let go of the heathen gods and serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth? But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Israelites, did you hear what John said? The hour have come and now is. The scriptures is not talking about the future, but right now. When the true worshippers will worship the Father. Did you hear the scripture? It said the Father in spirit and in truth. The Roman God want you to worship him. The Roman God is not the father. The sooner the people of the Most High understand this truth, the quicker their deliverance will be. More than 6 billion people are trapped in religion. Over 3 billion people believe their salvation is in the Roman God. If the Roman God could truly save you by giving you salvation, only a few would find him. The scripture said narrow is the road that leads to life. Because straight is the gate. And narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Three billion people is not the narrow road. Israelites all over the world, are you sure the Roman God that you turn black in the awakening is the narrow road that leads to life? A lot of Israelites in the awakening take the doctrines of Rome, restore the identity of the people, and continue with the worship of Baal. Israelites, restoring the identity of our ancestors in the scriptures is scratching the surface to the deception. If you want to get to the root, you must go beyond the surface by going deeper with the Most High. A lot of Israelites in the awakening operate in a place of fear. The Most High did not give us the spirit of fear. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I will never trust the seed of the serpent to tell me the truth about my history and my creator. Nor will I let an outsider that don't have a relationship with the true creator tell me how to draw near to the most high. The indigenous black people have allowed the principalities and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, the spiritual wickedness in high places control their every move. 
The awakening is not here for you to continue to worship Baal. The truth that shall make you free in the awakening is not going to support the doctrines of the beast religion. The awakening is not only exposing everything that was hidden. The awakening is the most High's way of pleading with his people to return to serve him as well as to repent. When you repent with all of your heart and soul, you will find forgiveness and mercy from the Father. We all need mercy and forgiveness because all of us have fallen short and continue to fall short in the awakening. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Israelites, salvation is not about believing in a God that don't look like you. Religion deceive you by telling you believing is all that it takes to receive salvation. Religion told you the laws are done away with. The Messiah took away the sins of the world. In order to receive salvation, believe in the Messiah. The workers of iniquity don't talk about repentance. They surely don't talk about the book of life. When you stand before the judgment seat of the Most High and the books are open, what will the book of life say about your works? And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. If what is written about you in the book of life, say you believe and accepted the Roman God as your Lord and Savior, throughout your life you were unkind and hard to deal with. You failed to repent because of ego and pride. Don't think for one second you will inherit the kingdom of the Most High. True repentance bring transformation. Only in the indigenous black community does spiritual growth equals wickedness. Some Israelites believe the Most High will condemn his daughters that are speaking truth about his words. I can't tell you how many times I was called wicked for doing the will of the Most High in my life. Yet these very people believe they are righteous in inheriting the kingdom. I am glad that I look to the Father to reward me instead of men. The people of the Most High are quick to stone the prophets and the anointed people of the Most High. Yet they will sit under the doctrines of devils in the beast religion and in the awakening without a word. Too many Israelites and indigenous black people don't know the voice of the Most High. If they did, they would only follow the voice of the Most High. If the voice of the Most High is the Roman God to you, you need to make sure that you belong to the Most High. And because I tell you the truth, Ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. All of Adam's seed was given salvation by covenant. You have to be a part of the righteous seed of Adam to obtain salvation. The question many should ask oneself, who are the people that descend from Adam? Because there are two species of mankind and Adam is the father to only one species. Israelites, let the truth of the Most High's words set you free. Don't let religion tell you about your creator. The Most High has given you the opportunity to go to him directly to find out who he is. Israelites, seek the Most High. I guarantee you will find him if you look for him with all of your heart. Israelites, the kingdom of the Most High is within you. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared, and have saved, and I have shown, when there was no strange God among you. Therefore, ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it?